Hello and welcome to Inside Baker. I'm your host, Kristen Babcock. We are going to be talking to a couple of cast members from the current theater production of Angel Street, Brian Behrens and Casey Forsythe. We will also be checking in with student reporter Tricia Shelton in the field. But first we're going to be talking about talking with Nurse Ruth Sarna, the Director of Student Health Care Services here at Baker, about the work she's doing to prepare for a pandemic flu outbreak. Well, thank you so much, Nurse Ruth, for being here. Um, I'm it's going my to pleasure. Oh, thank you. Well, I am going to start out by just asking you, what is pandemic flu and why do we need to be so worried about it? Okay. <laughs> um, when we talk about the pandemic flu, it's usually the, the bird flu or the avian flu, and that's a little different than the seasonal flu that's going on now because that's the kind that hits every January, February, and into March. Um, the avian flu is is still in in the Asian and Europe you know Europe countries and um, it's the it has not been transmitted human to human yet so that is the the good thing people are getting sick in the um, in those countries with that but the reason we need to prepare for it is that um, once there is a human to human transmission then it's like uh, we're in kind of the full speed mode ahead to prepare to um, for the cases that may occur. And um, the, it's different than a seasonal flu because it, um, it will hit the young people, it will hit healthy people, not just the chronically ill people that have had health problems. Um, and it will be uh, moved very rapidly. Um, so we're talking about the plans. We started a, um, we call it the uh, pandemic assessment team across campus and you'll love my title it's called the incident commander mm. and I, I'm wearing a new hat um, and what that means is that I'm kind of the resource person I gathered um, the different directors of campus areas uh, last May we started working on drafting a plan for campus uh, to include faculty staff students what we would need to do if if the flu did hit and when we start thinking about that you start thinking about um, the rate of absenteeism for workers, um, and then students as they become ill, faculty and, and staff, and at what point in time do we uh, start quarantining people? Um, you know, just the different aspects, get food service into them, um, and all the different areas that we need to think about uh, uh, housing, you know, student life, everything. And I've rattled along. Do you have any questions for me as I'm oh, telling sure, you Oh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, you mentioned that it affects healthy and young people right. specifically. Is there a reason why this flu reacts that way well, that we know of? The seasonal flu, you know, it, occur it occurs year after year, and, and we have built up immunity to some of those viruses. This is a totally new virus. It's H5N1, if you see that in the papers and in the information. And because it's new, we haven't built up um, the immunity to it. And so that's why it's kind of frightening that, that uh, it will hit harder and, and hit the, uh, the healthy people. Mm -hmm. What I encourage everyone is to, um, you know, if you're st sick, stay home from uh, work. And for students, stay out of class. I know they'd love to hear that from the nurse. Uh, the nurse told me to stay home, but um, it's just the uh, easy spread of it. Um, I brought you a present. It's some hand sanitizer. <laughs> you can use it in the department here, but um, I encourage the, what your mother's told you forever is hand washing, mm -hmm. uh, sneezing into your sleeve or into your jackets. Um, and there's hand sanitizers in the cafeteria just around the corner by each uh, line where you pick up your tray and I encourage the students to be sure and use that because it's important just the, the common things of uh, hand washing and um, staying home when you're ill and, and taking good care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. How, what type of symptoms does this illness include? How will we know that well, it's, it's the hit. respiratory type mm -hmm. um, uh, symptoms with fevers and chills and the important thing is I want everybody want to come on Monday night March 5th at 7 o'clock in Rice Auditorium. Um, the uh, infectious disease nurse uh, that's in charge of all the diseases of the infectious type nature uh, from the health department in Lawrence will present um, the topic and it's preparing families and individuals uh, for the uh, flu and, and to be ready for it. So it's an important uh, symposium that we want the students and the faculty and staff in the community to, to attend. Mm -hmm. How far along exactly are these plans if bird flu does hit? 
Actually, we okay. have a, a draft that's pretty well formalized for the campus, and uh, we've since we've worked since May, we're kind of ahead of the other campuses that I've talked mm -hmm. to my colleagues and uh, see what their plan is like. That that we really have some um, plans and ideas in place. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of students here live on campus and dorms and um, Greek houses where you're enclosed with a lot of people right. who could be sick. What? How do we even begin to prepare for what that type of situation? What we're kind of looking at is um, to assess the number of students that would be able to travel home easily, uh, and and if you know, th then send them on home, and the other uh, students that we would then try to uh, isolate in rooms, uh, and the same with the Greek houses, they would kind of make a determination of of the possibility of the students that could travel, and uh, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, we even have made plans that if it became such an epidemic, we would use uh, Collins Gym as sort of a um, infirmary type situation. So we've we've placed an order in for lots of masks and gloves and and uh, extra Tylenol. There is an antiviral medication that they're trying to come up with, uh, but again, it'll probably be short on store on um, uh, amount that we can get as far as the supply. And um, they have not come up with a vaccine yet that they feel is, is really uh, covering this, this virus. So uh, there's a lot of, um, it's not if it's going to hit, it's when. And so that's why we're saying uh, we need to be prepared and, and be ready mm -hmm. and think about it. So for someone that is maybe just hearing about this for the first time, it, it sounds scary, you know, especially saying it's not a matter of if but when. What would you say to someone that is really concerned? Is there uh, a way for students specifically to prepare? Um, I think they would probably, uh, you know, begin thinking of, of how they take care of themselves, the amount of sleep they're getting, and, and their their uh, uh, diet. Um, having just, just some bottled water on hand, um, and um, uh, especially when if they do get sick, to make sure that they. Um, take the precautions and uh, start thinking about uh, keeping the spread at a minimum. All so. right. Well, it sounds like there's a good chance you might be really busy <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Well, it's something to think about and, and prepare for. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, Nurse Ruth, for being here. Um, the symposium, again, is going to be on March 5th, on Monday, March 5th, right. at what time? 7 o'clock in Rice. 7 o'clock in Rice Auditorium. All right, well, we are going to check in with Trisha Shelton, who is currently at the Great Jeans Giveaway. Baker University is doing its part to prevent eating disorders in our students. The Great Jeans Giveaway took place Tuesday in the Harder Union. Students had the opportunity to bring in their old skinny jeans to donate to Goodwill. Director of the Counseling Center, Kelly Bowers, says the point of the event is to encourage students to accept their body type as it is, instead of trying to force themselves onto crash diets or even eating disorders to fit into clothes that are just too small. Mm -hmm. Today we're doing the Great Jeans Giveaway, which is part of the National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Um, pretty much the Great Jeans Giveaway is a chance for women and men to throw out their jeans that maybe they're trying to get into, hoping to get into the kind of skinny jeans as a way to just kind of um, feel comfortable with who you are and kind of the jeans that do fit you. Um, so we've got a variety of kind of crafts and things going on that we're starting off with and in hopes that, you know, it'll make people think a little bit about where they are in terms of their body image. Sophomore Mandy King participated in all of the events, which included decorating a jeans pocket, a prize giveaway, and free cookies. Um, I got the email about it, so I thought I would stop and just see what it was about. The event is part of National Eating Disorder Awareness Week activities on Baker's campus, and the event coordinators have one message for students. Remember, don't fight your genes, just change your genes. Trisha Shelton reporting for KNBU-TV.